skin, big bandage. What does my digestion have to do with my acne? Peter Progress 23 aka Elizabeth here. Welcome back to the acne channel. So we know that acne is such a like complex issue. It comes from a number of things. It could be because of hormonal imbalance, it could be because of your genetics, or it could be because of your digestive issues. Here are the three main questions that you gotta ask yourself in terms of figuring out if your acne is from digestive issues. The first one is, do I break out after eating certain foods? such as sugar or dairy or heaps of meat. Do I experience stomach aches and weird stomach noises after eating certain foods? And do I fart a lot? <laughs> it's honestly a serious question. Do you have bad flatulence that smells? The third question is, how are my experiences in the toilet? I know this is a very personal topic but when you go to the bathroom do you have regular smooth and natural stool movements if not something is going wrong with your body something is wrong with your digestive system and hence why you have acne because basically our digestive system has a duty and that duty is to cleanse and get rid of all our toxins within our body and if something is wrong with our digestive system what happens is all the toxins are trapped into our body and it gets released via the skin because we know that the skin is one of the largest organs that eliminate toxins. So that's why we get pimples. That is the connection between digestive system and acne. But luckily for you, if you are watching this video, I have some tips that you can use in terms of improving our digestive system and hence ridding our face of the cystic pimples. Okay, so again, I have eight main tips that you can apply in order to help your digestive system have that boost and function normally. So number one, you are going to be like eye roll, but it's the most important thing you can do for your body. And that is to drink water. I know, I know, I know, I say this all the time in every one of my videos, but it's seriously important and people undermine the power of water. Our bodies are made up of 75% of water. We need water to carry nutrients throughout our body to flush out all the toxins in our system. Without water, we start to look dull. We lack life throughout our bodies and it becomes really dehydrated. So if your system is not having water and those nutrients within your body, your face will become dull. It will become dehydrated and it will cause your skin to break out. Dehydration equals an excess of sebum, like our oil glands will go into overdrive. And that's not something we want. Number two, you need to keep a food diary. You need to kind of map out what you eat, what you are eating every single day. And keep your meals really simple because if your meals are complex, there's no point of keeping a food diary because you're not going to be able to pinpoint the culprit of what's causing your indigestion. So keeping your meals simple, such as maybe in the morning, you have chia seed pudding. So chia seed with almond milk and some fruits. Okay, and maybe at lunch you have, let's say some steamed veggies, lean chicken and rice. Okay, so you only have three things that you can note down. Over the days you can change different things and see how your body reacts. So keeping a food diary, noting down what you're eating, keeping your meal simple, and then two to three hours later, check how your body is feeling. Are you experiencing stomach rumbles and stomach aches? Are you feeling a bit nauseous? How is your skin reacting? Is your skin going oily? So those are the little notes that you need to jot down. And over time, you'll be able to figure out what your trigger foods are. And eventually, you can avoid those foods and hence get clearer, brighter skin. Number three is asking yourself how regular your bowel movements are. Are you going at least once a day? Do you have the urge to go after a meal? Because if you're not going to toilet properly, again, the toxins and the heat and all the waste is trapped into your body and it will cause like stomach upsets and acne to come out onto your face. So, if you are not going to toilet properly, you need to be 
exercising regularly, drinking water, and eating foods that are easily digestible. Because if you're having raw veggies, for example, with insoluble fibers, it's putting a lot of work on your digestive system and you won't be able to go to the toilet because it's too much work on your body that you're exhausting your system out. Another thing is, in my other video, there's other methods where you can increase that flow within your body. So what I mean by that is you sit in a squatting position before you go to the toilet. You go into your room and you sit into a squatting position. And that body position will help your body get ready to go to the toilet. By exercising as well, that movement, constant movement in your body, allows your digestive system to work more frequently or efficiently. And then also after you go to the bathroom, check your type of stool. Is it really hard to go to the toilet? How is your experience? Are you putting too much effort to go to the toilet because you're not meant to? These are the indicators that something's wrong with your digestive system. So keeping note of that is really important in your healing process. If I'm like clogging the toilet with my stool and having a really poor, exhaustive experience in the bathroom, then I need to take the next few steps. So what I need to do is take probiotics. Now probiotics in the form of the tablet or forms of powder or even kombucha in, a, in the form of drinks or food such as fermented veggies really help heal the gut environment in your body and what it does is it, it aids your digestive system. So go to the chemist and ask for different probiotic strains because and you change your strains every like three months because if you're only exposing yourself to one particular strain you're not actually catering for your your like the the environment within your gut flora because within your gut there are so many different bacteria the good bacteria and the bad bacteria and what you need is a variety in order to kind of build that strong immune system that strong gut flora in order for your system to function efficiently number four i've kind of touched up on this but it's exercising Maybe go around for a jog or do your favorite activity. What I do personally is I salsa dance every Monday. I also do Oz tag on Tuesday night. So that constant kind of exercise and even just walking around my house allows that increase of blood circulation. Your blood needs to circulate within your body so then that nutrients are flowing throughout your, your system. That way your skin feels refreshed, rejuvenated, and renewed. Because if your body, your blood is stagnated, what you're doing is depriving your body from those nutrients and causing your, yeah, your cells to be more stressed and upset. A lot of the times when I'm sitting in my chair and doing computer work and I'm not even moving at all, I start to feel the heat on like my bum and I get like little, little pimples. And that is a strong indicator that I am not increasing that blood circulation. So definitely exercise. Really, really important for your digestive system too because you want to keep the body you know, moving. Number five is avoiding high gassy foods. So this includes like caffeine and carbonated drinks and alcohol. So I remember a time when I was drinking so much alcohol during my July month because it was my birthday. And honestly, I woke up feeling so gross and groggy my i basically had diarrhea the next day because my digestive system was like out of whack honestly all those things put so much stress on the body and again you don't want your body to be overworking because you'll be at the cost of your skin even foods like raw veggies are hard to digest so sometimes what dietitians recommend is having like soups and stews and stuff because it doesn't it just goes straight through your di your intestines you know in your colon so there's not an, a lot of work to be put through but you need a balance between like your soups and then your veggies but don't go with like broccoli cauliflower those are the two main corporates that are high in gas so you'll find yourself like fighting a lot <laughs> yes it's gonna be a terrible terrible day for you and your partner the next one is avoiding gluten so gluten is involving like wheat, barley and rye. Those are the three main things that are highly, highly, highly processed. And our bodies cannot, some, or my body, cannot really digest it properly. So when I opt for gluten-free meals, I feel like my experiences in the bathroom is so much better. It's like, yes, I feel amazing and that's all i want for you so look i'm not gonna like you're not you don't have celiac disease but you can be intolerant or sensitive to gluten foods the best way to figure out if you're gluten like gluten sensitive is by keeping a food diary 
and have one week where you're eating full gluten foods and see how you feel. And then have another week where you're eating gluten free foods and then you'll see that you'll find an improvement within your digestive system and maybe even your acne. Well, you should be, that's what I found for me. I was gluten free for about a month and I was healing my system and in that month I saw that my skin was much, much, much better. Now, I still eat gluten here, here and there but when I was going through cystic, cystic acne with like nodules and clogged pores, I did not have any dairy, any gluten. I avoided foods that were high in gas. And what happened was my skin was able to heal. And as my skin was able to heal, I, and like, I didn't have like strong stomach distress anymore. Slowly, 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 I was able to incorporate a little bit of dairy here, a little bit of gluten here, just to, to have a balanced lifestyle. And now my skin is doing so much better. So I was actually talking about this in my live the other day. You will get criticism from Instagram accounts out there saying that you are living a restrictive lifestyle where you have to cut this and this and this and this and out, like all this out. But the thing is, you, you need to listen to your body. If you are going through a hard time with your digestive system, your gut health and acne, you need to go through this process of elimination. You need to eliminate these foods and find the culprit, okay? And then after you find the culprit, you can start incorporating all the other foods if you like. But don't let anybody else tell you that your life is restrictive because this is what you have to do to your body and you'll figure it out. And this is just a part of the healing process. You gotta figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So I had a period where people were saying that, oh my God, you're living such a mundane, boring life. You know, I can't believe you can't have dairy. And I'm looking at them like, just because I don't have dairy doesn't mean that my life is boring. It's just funny what people do. Like they criticize your lifestyle and they don't just don't understand how much, how important food and your skin is to you. But anyways, like I still have dairy here and there now. Like I just don't have excessive amounts of cheese like other people. And that's okay. If they want to eat cheese, woohoo. If I want, if I don't want to have cheese, same with me. It's like, I, I wish people would just respect other people's choices. Number seven is, let me move on to number seven. Oh wow, I went on the rant, um, rampage there. So number seven is having Chinese herbal medicine. So if you've been following me for a while now, I take zilch acne pills. So check out Peter Progress 23, one of the highlights. I have my whole document on me loving Chinese herbal medicine. What it basically does is that all these herbs, roots and flowers are concocted into these tablets. And when I take these tablets, it helps flush out all the toxins trapped in my liver and my digestive system clearing out all that heat and naturally healing me. Basically, all my cystic acne kind of disappeared after taking Chinese herbal medicine in combination with all the other tips that I've been mentioning. So definitely check that out. And the last one is really, 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 really important is don't stress. When you're not stressing, you are putting less work on your body. And if you're like, yeah, unicorns, butterflies, and flowers, then your digestive system is working in a, in a very healthy environment. Whenever you have negative thoughts, write it down into your diary. Express it and then acknowledge them and then move on. Talk to friends who are supportive and who love you for you. So yeah, those are my main eight tips. And hopefully these are really, really helpful for you guys because personally, my IBS irritable bowel syndrome has improved drastically and I hope you all the best and I'm sending you all my love and light. Also, I hope to see you on Pretty Progress 23 on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook. Find me on any of those social media outlets. Message me because I am always here to chat with you. Mwah. See you guys later. Bye. There's a hope that's waiting for you.